Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call this meeting order, please. I'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, I please have a roll call. Supervisor Alex Sapien? Here. Trustee Dean Morelli? Here. Trustee Greg Vickers? Present. Trustee Kieran Jansen? Here. Trustee Denise Salvino? Here. Highway Commissioner Jim Louch? Here. Uh, uh, Co-Hector Jessica Candidate? Here. Attorney Gary Mueller? Present. All right, thank you. First, um, first topic that's not the agenda, we have news to celebrate. I hear the Highway Commissioner had a birthday a couple weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> 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 Thank you. Can you please act out so I can see the Zoom uh, participants? The record? Oh, not there. Go to the bottom. A little bit to the left. Yep. There we go. Thank you. All right. Moving on. So, first topic on the agenda is the approval of the minutes. This includes the minutes for the monthly meeting of August 8th, 2023, as well as the minutes for the bid opening meeting on August 8th, 2023. I will need a motion to approve those minutes. I'll make that motion. I have a motion by Nadine Alvino. I'll second. I have a second by Kevin Johnson. <coughs> Any questions on the minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Moving on, I have bills in the amount of 163000 $709.82. I will need a motion to pay the bills. I make that motion. I have a motion by Karen Johnson. I'll second. Second by Denise Salvino. Any questions on the bills? Uh, I was just going to ask Jim. I see that, that truck that uh, was, it says lease or purchase. That was a purchase, correct? Purchase. Okay, so it's owned by the highway department. Yes. Okay. And then on the, uh, the Gaskin Drive, Weber Road annexation, is that? Completed or is that still in the we, uh, After a lot of uh, research, uh, Alex and I had uh, been talking it over. We're going to enter into some talks with the city, uh, village of Romeoville, and try to iron that transfer of uh, ownership to that. To that right. All, right. All, right. All right. Thank you. Do we have any more questions on the bills? Hearing none, can I please have a roll call, Madam Clerk? Sapien? Yes. Morelli? Yes. Vickers? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Salvino? Yes. Motion carries. Do we have any citizens wishing to address the board in regards to road and bridge tonight? All right, hearing and seeing none, we'll move on. So we have here next on the agenda is approval to amend ordinance 2014-5, which is for a responsible bidder to reflect $30,000 in accordance to the new Illinois state law. Everyone should have a copy of the ordinance, the ordinance in their packet. Uh, I believe the real only change is versus the record we had on file previously was $20,000 versus now the Illinois state law says $30,000, so we're just changing the amount uh, so that they're in agreement. Does anyone have any questions on this amendment? Hearing none, can I, uh, I will need a motion to approve this amendment to the ordinance. I'll make my motion. A motion by Karen Johnson. I'll second. I have a second by Denise Salvino. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> motion carries. Moving on, Highway Commissioner's report. Commissioner Lodge. Uh, no report tonight. I have to excuse myself for some family matters that I have to do. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. Wish you the best. Uh, I have no other business and no uh, need to go into executive session. Do we have any final comments or questions from the press these tonight? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the Road and Bridge Fund meeting. I'll make that motion. I have a motion by Dean Salvino. Second. Second by Karen Johnson. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Moving on to the next meeting, that is Town Fund. <coughs> First on the agenda, we have the approval of the minutes, which are the monthly meeting for August 7, 2023. I will need a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make that motion. I have a motion by Karen Johnson. I'll second. I have a second by Denise Salvino. Any questions on last month's minutes? All those in favor? 
All right. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. On to the bills. Uh, we, uh, we have bills in the amount of $18,139.97. I will need a motion to pay the bills. I'll make that motion. I have a motion by Karen Johnson. I'll, sec Go I'll second. I have a second by Denise Salvino. Any questions on the bills? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, I please have a roll call. Salvino? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Sickus? Yes. Morelli? Yes. Sapien? Yes. What are the chairs? Do we have any citizens wishing to address the board tonight in regards to the town fund? Hearing and seeing none, we'll move on to the clerk's report. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Supervisor. The clerk's office was very busy in August with notary services and diaper pack distributions. FOIA requests were lost for us in this past month for the first time in a while. I also took some time to prepare an official updated Lockport Township Government Description Sheet, as well as an organizational chart page. These documents are on display as required by Section 4 of the FOIA Act at both of our township buildings. I've included these sheets for all of you. Lastly, please remember to complete your required Open Meetings Act training and turn in your certificate to my office. And that is it. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Moving on, do we have any comments or suggestions from the trustees? Hearing none, we'll move on to the building report. So for new garage and parking lot update, I just want to remind everyone that we do have a special meeting on September 27th at 4 o'clock p.m. Uh, this will be a, a meeting on two topics. The first topic being uh, the new garage, and the second topic being HR and the employment handbook. Uh, we will start off talking about the new garage, and then we will need to go into executive session to talk about the HR guidelines, given that we will be discussing personnel. But, other than that, I only have one minor update, uh, or a visual rather, that I'd like everyone to see. It should be included in your packet, uh, and it's related to the new garage. So everyone should have received a visual in their packet. It's like a little map with like a blue river on it. So what happened is, uh, two weeks ago, we had an environmental agency from Will County come in, and we discussed a couple of things, including native plants and something in the long term about potentially you know, a garden in, in, in the back. Uh, and so one of the topics that came up in passing was us potentially building or expanding our parking lots, and then we brought up the topic of, of wetlands. And so this environmental group actually uh, did, you know, somewhere from on their own hand uh, to actually provide us this visual of just how much wetland we, we have. And so you'll see that the entire backside of the township fields is, is wetland, and then we have a portion um, that's actually in front of us that is wetlands, but it doesn't necessarily include all of that area, just like a quarter. So the reason I bring this up is wetlands are protected. So, you know, if we had any hopes of potentially expanding the parking lot towards the back, we wouldn't be able to do that. Any construction we do have must be on the side which is to the right of the township, which is actually, you know, facing in front of me or the area closest to the garage we have now. So. Again, we can discuss more of this uh, at the special meeting on September 27th, but just wanted to give everyone a quick update. Moving on to new business. So, <coughs> the main topic for tonight, I have some friends over from the Juliet Fire Department, as well as the Lockport Township Fire Department. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, I want to give just a brief introduction, but the Juliet Fire Department has started this incredible initiative with mental health in the city of Juliet. Nelson Joliet Township, uh, and there we've been in conversation the past couple of weeks of potentially expanding this mental health project into other areas, including Lockport Township. Uh, and so for that, well, what I'll have is I'll have Lockport Township Fire Department give a brief presentation to explain all of this, and then afterwards we'll discuss what a potential partnership would look like. So, my friends from the Joliet Fire Department, if you could please come up. Thank you guys for having us. Uh, my name is Jeff Carey. I'm the fire chief with Joliet Fire Department. And this is John Lukancic. He's our mental health coordinator and peer support coordinator for the Joliet Fire Department. Uh, the reason we're coming here for you today is just like 
uh, Commissioner said that we developed a mental health program that we think would be a great benefit for all of Little County, and we started expanding outside. So uh, a few years back, we started what in the first years they call community risk reduction. And what community risk reduction is, we start looking at our data to find out what are the real risks going on in our community, not necessarily just fire risks or fire prevention stuff. And when we looked at our data, we found that we were going at 15% of our calls are for some type of mental or behavioral health. If you added substance abuse, then it was almost 20% of the calls to respond to. And at first, it might not seem like that was a fire department issue, but like to say, if, if, uh, if we don't address the problem, it will become a fire department issue. So uh, we looked around, we started trying to find out what programs were in the county or in the city, and what we found was that access to mental health care was uh, difficult for most people. It was about six to eight weeks for your first appointment with a psychologist, four months with a psychiatrist. And um, and then if you were 18 and under and on Medicaid, it was almost impossible. So we were trying to tap local resources. That seemed to be the big issue. And then um, according to the Will County 2020 Community Needs Assessment, it was access, cost, and transportation. So we started looking around at what we could do. So the first thing we did was we figured we wanted to take care of ourselves on the fire department. So John here developed a program called uh, Crisis First Aid for Paramedics. And what that did was it basically turned all of our paramedics into uh, crisis interventionists. Not clinicians, but just we all learned the seven steps of crisis intervention so we could start that process before we refer them out, just so we weren't just handing you a pamphlet. We knew how to get people to calm down, um, go through the seven steps so we could get them to listen to us, to, to present them with the resources. So what Christ First Day for us did was, one, it was for our own, our own uh, personnel. By teaching everybody basically mental health first aid, it, it guy, let guys know in their companies and with themselves, it let them recognize their own stresses and their own issues they might be having. And then two, it recognized within their companies of what was going on. So, and three, then they had the resources at hand if they had an issue. So with our program I'll get to, we, we can get them into clinical care within 24 to 48 hours. Um, so that was the first thing that CFA accomplished. Second thing was, was traumatic stress. All these programs out there going on right now with 988, the um, mobile crisis units, that nobody addresses traumatic stress. The fire departments, the police department, we're on the scene when something tragic just happened. You either lost a loved one, maybe your house got caught on fire, uh, you witnessed a bad accident or a shooting. Uh, we largely in the past, we never addressed the bystanders or the loved ones that just lost somebody. So through our CFA program, we addressed it through traumatic stress. Um, we pull either those bystanders or loved ones aside and we go through the seven crisis steps with them, and then at the end we leave them that pamphlet so they can uh, follow up with the resources if they need it. But the key to that whole program is, within 24 to 48 hours, our fire department calls them back to make sure that they are feeling okay and that they got go going through the process. And the follow-up's been the key. That's where we really get them. Well, at the call, they're not listening to us, they just lost somebody. But two days later, now they are listening, and that's when we, that's when we get them. And so that is the aim to stop a problem before it even starts. And then obviously the third step was for the, the mental health patient themselves. Um, before we started the program, like you said, we ran into this dead end where we couldn't really get them any better care than what was already available. So what we ended up doing, and this just came, ThriveWorks came to the City of Joliet to be part of our EAP. And when the guy was talking about how great this, it's a national company where 4,000 clinicians, they uh, you know can see somebody sometime same day, but within 24 to 48 hours. 85% of their business is telehealth, but they can also see people in person. Um, and as he was presenting this to the city to be part of the EAP, he was like, well, this is great, but how can we get this to our residents who really need it? Um, and they had never worked with the residents before. They were only working with insurance like everybody else because they didn't need to because they were so busy. So we worked with them over, over a year to get their model to change to what we needed, and they basically did everything we asked for. To, so we got them to accept Medicaid, um, and take pretty much everybody we had. But the key was we had to find them office space for them to do it. So we partnered with Silver Cross Hospital. Silver Cross Hospital gave us 2,000 square foot of free office space at 1051 Essington Road in Joliet that has five clinicians in there and a therapy land just for kids. It's a play therapy land for five to 12 year olds where they bring them. So even though they do a lot of telehealth and that's by patient request, people want to do telehealth, they will see you in person and for the kids they want to see them in person. So. These were then the partners we ended up getting it into the schools because two school years before this one, within a 15 mile radius of Joliet City Hall, we had 12 high school suicides. 
and that was one of the big things we wanted to make sure we address. So we got it in all of our schools, and in this past school year we had zero, and in the city of Joliet this year we haven't had a suicide under the age of 40. Um, and we'll get to those stats too. But then NAMI, it has an office in the ThriveWorks office, because they were able to, NAMI does education portion, so after somebody has their therapy session, they can go get the family education and all that too. And what ThriveWorks basically does, they do everything from family counseling all the way to psychiatry. So you have whatever your need is, they, they fill the whole thing. Um, and then we work with our homeless shelters, that, so we have our homeless where they can telehealth from the shelter because part of the reason when we talk to Morningstar Mission and Daybreak is more majority of the homeless have some kind of mental health issues and they said we can get them housing and we can get them jobs, but as soon as they leave the shelter, they're back here in two months because their mental health, they lose their resources. With this, this program stays with them forever no matter where they go. So and, and for our other populations, um, we have a, a huge Hispanic and Latino population in Joliet, 33%. And uh, we needed a way to culturally and linguistically talk to those folks to make sure that they're getting the care that they need. So ThriveWorks being a nationwide company, they, they have actually have access to Spanish speaking and culturally aware people in other states, Texas, New Mexico, so they can actually deal on a cultural and linguistic level with the people who need it in, in the community. So they're doing an awesome job um, with, with other populations too, not just not just uh, the English speaking community, but the Hispanic Latino community is very important. So through these partnerships, we addressed a lot of those issues, you know, the three barriers they said were access. With Thrive, we took care of that access. The cost, I'll give it a second, and then um, the transportation, telehealth, we've got them everywhere. And actually work with Joliet Township that um, they also provide rides if somebody did need a, a ride to their actual therapy. But since it's mostly telehealth, even the kids at school, they got it on their homework pages so they can telehealth at school or later on. Um, that's a, so the, how the cost, F, so we, uh, we asked ThriveWorks, well, you know, 8% of Joliet residents have no insurance, 35% were Medicaid. 32% are Medicare, um, and we wanted to make sure we got everybody that access and no cost. So they estimated it cost $400,000 a year for 150,000 residents of Joliet to cover all, everybody. So but they, they would take insurance, they take whatever insurance takes, City of Joliet picks up the rest. If there's no insurance, we pick up the whole appointment. It's $99 for an hour long appointment with your psychologist, uh, $189 for a psychiatrist for an hour long. So it's still very inexpensive, but a lot of those people that didn't have insurance, we didn't want to leave them out. So they estimated that 4000 we went to the city of Joliet, the council agreed. They basically, it goes into a, basically a bank account, a fund. Um, you're not paying thrives for anything, and only at the end of the month, whatever people's insurance, it, it draws it out of there. City of Joliet tomorrow can say, we don't want to do it anymore, and all the money goes, whatever's left goes right back to them. So it, it was kind of a no risk that they could end it at any time. Um, and you're not, there's no contract with them, it's just a, an MOU that your money's sitting in their basically a bank account that gets drawn on, they, let, they give you a statement, you know, we don't see patients' names because we don't want to know, but you see who's using it, where they're at, who's no insurance, what's there. So um, that's been been excellent with that. So in the first year, though, we just finished our first year with it, it actually, the actual cost, we had 700 residents enrolled, gave over 4,000 free clinical sessions, and it cost the city of Joliet $91,000 for hundred. So it was a lot less than we expected because they're taking that insurance first. And Medicaid does pay most of it now, now that they're taking Medicaid. So it's really, we have about, what is that, 54 people in there with no insurance at all. Um, but what the problem ended up being was all these Joliet Township residents that have Joliet addresses kept calling and we'd have to hear the family members cry on the phone that I can't get in but because they weren't a resident. So we went to Joliet Township and they made the same funds so we could get the Township residents. And we get a lot of that with Crest Hill residents too because they're right there and they're like, but I'm just across the street. You know? <laughs> so, and it's like, well, I said, I, I can't because I don't, it's not my money. You know, I can't know, knowingly. Um, but it's, it's hard to hear. So that's when we started, you know what, let's, let's start trying to expand it outside because we've seen the great use. And so our results have, have been, we've seen in the fire department this year, we've seen a 12% reduction in our mental health calls after for every year going up. We've seen this 12% and the biggest number we've seen a 52% drop in our suicide rate. Um, by really getting into the communities, like it's not just, and that's why it works great to the fire departments. Because the fire department's a trusted brand, we can get into a lot of the schools, we can work with different community groups that we see all the time. Um, so going through the fire department's been big, a big uh, success of it. Not that you could do it without the fire department, but 
we've been a good driver of it just because of the brand. Well, and, and that, that front end cost of $91,000 has saved almost a million dollars on the back end in the ambulance fees. That was, so that was just from three patients. That's from three patients. <laughs> so so, so yeah, we had three so. patients who in 18 months called 913 and 17 times. Oh, that was a total of almost a million dollars. Just in ambulance bills, we had their ER bills is about $4 million. Uh, once we got them in the program last year, since Thanksgiving, those three people have called, and they haven't called at all. The one guy calls once in a while just to see how we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and we actually had an ambulance crew who was worried about some of the people that they normally pick up, 10 people they went out to visit. They went and visited these folks and just to make sure they were okay, and these folks said, we don't need you anymore because we have clinical care. So the ambulance service is getting a lot less use for mental health. And a 12% drop in Joliet in one year is huge because there's a t usually a 10% increase every year. So a 12% drop is, 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 a, is a really big deal for a drop in mental health calls for service. So. so what was happening before was, you know, people, they're in crisis, they don't know what to do, they can't see a clinician for four or six weeks or longer, they call 911. We had nothing we could do for them, we take them to the ER. The ER is not the right place for them. They sit there for eight hours, 10 hours, they see a counselor in the ER, they refer them to the county health department, they still gotta wait that six to eight weeks. So two weeks later, they're still in crisis, they can't wait to call again. And that's all we were doing, was just shuffling these people around and around. So now we get them here, and it stops. Now once they call us once, we still might have to take them to the ER that time, but now we enroll them in there and we don't see them ever again. Because the next time they're in crisis, they just go right to their therapist. Or, they never, or they're never in crisis again. Yeah because they're, they've got clinical care. So. so it's whoever becomes your clinician is your clinician for life if you want. You can switch if you want, but they're, so usually what we've seen is once we got a resident enrolled, they see the, their clinician three times a week, maybe for the first two or three weeks. Then after that, maybe once or twice more, and by a month, we, they, they're pretty much done with the program, but if two or three months later they have a problem again, they just go right back to that clinician. And we're, we're missing the next slide, but the next slide's really good. I wish you guys <laughs> But uh, what, what it indicates is it shows that the suicide rates in um, Will County, the actual suicide rate in Will County is, is trending up between 22 and 23. But the overall, that's, been, that's outside of Joliet and Plainfield because we took our numbers out because our suicide rate has dropped 52%. So we have actually brought the suicide rate of the entire county down, um, but the county outside of Joliet is trending up. But we brought the overall numbers down because Joliet dropped 52% in one year. So, so suicide prevention is a huge deal with this. Um, and we have a suicidologist on our peer support group, Sister Mary Frances Seely. She's a world-renowned suicidologist. And she said that this just doesn't happen anywhere that you have a drop like this in one in one year, uh, of half, half of what you were the year before. So it's working out very well. Um, Chief Carey's got a whole litany of, of success stories that go along with this from folks from three years old up to 84 years old. It's helping a lot of people at a lot of different life levels, people from all, all walks of life all over the community. And I'm sure he could tell you lots of stories. Uh, and if you guys want to know, he could tell you lots of stories. But we wanted to let you know how our program's spreading. So, uh, I wish I had my PowerPoint, I was a little, it's a little easier to read, but we started off in Joliet in Joliet Township. Well, we got a call from, uh, we, well, we got Troy on for next year, so Troy's already bought in, Plainfield's already bought in, um, you guys are here, <laughs> Lockport, um, so we're working, we're working with Lockport right now, but uh, Crete and Shanahan, we're, in, we're talking with them too, so this is actually spreading, started in Joliet, and it's spreading throughout the county right now, so we're hoping, and we, were, we they have the 708 board in, in Will County, the mental health board, we're actually hoping to make this their thing so they can pay for it eventually. So that the individual cities and townships don't have to foot the bill, but that's gonna be, that's a walk that we're on right now that we're trying to get to. So um, you guys are all aware that the tax that got passed, uh, the 0.05% for mental health, that's what we're kind of going after to try to get the whole county and. To, to be covered on this. And we figured, what was our estimate to cover the whole county on? It's about a million dollars. About a million, or between one and two million dollars to cover the whole county. So, so that's what we're moving to next with this is, honestly, the townships probably shouldn't have to bear the brunt of this, especially when the county is taxing for it. So we're, kind of, we're working with the county and we're going to the 708 board meetings to try to get them to, to buy into this as well. So 
hopefully if it's funded in these in these townships hopefully it, that's not for long hopefully the county starts funding it um, when they get their money for the yeah that levy won't you know it's going to be year. back for this year yeah. so they won't even receive money until next summer so we're looking everybody to get on now and then hopefully once if they pass it in a year it'll be all on them but in the meantime we've just seen such great success yeah. mm -hmm. and it's worked so well for our residents we're hoping that other people would come about just because it really has really helped out. We've seen, I mean, I guess he said I could tell you 20 different stories of people that have called and talked to us about it. So, um, I think unless, whatever said, okay. Yeah, I, actually in both hospitals, in St. Joe's and Silver Cross, Silver Cross uh, doctors and nurses there, they can refer people right to Thrivers. St. Joe's doing the same thing on, on discharge. They're referring people out because they just don't have the clinician to handle it. So with the shortage of clinicians, doctors, nurses, this is kind of what we're using to, to uh, address that. Well, and, and the way we wrote this up is, we wrote it up so what we did in Joliet can be done in any other community. So we actually wrote a book about this. If you guys want a copy of it, I'll give it to you. But it's how any community with a fire department, a hospital, a NAMI chapter can make this work in their own community, you know, without having Joliet to be, have to have to be involved. So. Um, this is something that, you know, we kind of started, and it's good, but anybody can do it as long as they know the right, the right steps to follow. So, so if anybody wants the book, I'll get you a copy of the book, and Chief Carey sent his card around. If you send him an email, I'll get you a free copy of the book, and you can read it. And, but it tells you how to do all this stuff, who you have to partner with, how, how you have to set this up in order for it to work for the whole community. But the reason this works is because of the fire department. The reason it works is because of the fire department, because... People see the Maltese cross and they trust and they trust the fire department and they say, all right, what they're telling us, we're going to listen to that, where if somebody privately came in, if ThriveWorks was trying to do this on their own, it would have never worked. Um, and we were really rough on ThriveWorks when they came in to make sure they were on the level and they were doing what they were supposed to be doing. But like Chief Kerry said, they did everything that they said they were going to do and more even, and it's worked out well. But the hospitals and the schools were two of the most important, of the two of the most important people, and they bought into it very well. Joliet Township and Joliet Grade Schools both bought into it very well. They use ThriveWorks as well. Um, the hospital, Silver Cross Hospital, actually uses ThriveWorks as their employee assistance program now for mental health. So they actually use it. They like it so much that they endorsed it, gave them space, and are using it. So, and it's being used in Joliet City now too as as for employee assistance. So. It's working very well. And yeah, for you guys, like for doing all that, uh, Chief Connor O'Connor's here from Life Board, they're they're in the want to do the same thing. So the fire department here will drive it just like there. So all I really need would be the same thing to provide the service for free is just that funding source, and the the fire department Life Board will be able to do the same thing we did we did here in Joliet. Yeah, if you don't mind. Um, Except my name's Shadow Connor, um, the fire chief of Lockwood Township. Um, I don't have too much to add, but just to give my perspective. Uh, the meetings I had with Chief Carey and, and the supervisor as well, within the first 10 minutes of the conversation I was up. So how can we provide this to Lockport Township? We have the same problems as the city of Juliet, just on a smaller scale. So in the past 12 months, we responded to 788 addiction and mental health related calls in the township. Now with the statistics that he discussed, I'm like, that it, it sells itself. And Chief Carey's already written the playbook for it. So, we have these same problems, and we're the fire department. Uh, our service ended at the door of the ER. And like he was saying, we have we have returned customers all the time. Um, and we want to do more, but that was never in our purview. And what happens at the hospital, usually we don't, we don't find out until the next time we go pick them up again. So this gives definitive care to these people, where as opposed to just putting a Band-Aid on, on a wound, you're, you're not fixing the problem. What this does is help fix the problem of mental health in your community. And the suicide statistics speak for themselves. So if that's something that we can implement in Lockport Township, I'm on board. Um, we're going to present to our board uh, this month a proposal to create a, a full-time position <coughs> for a community, community risk reduction officer, which will include a community mental health program. If they don't approve that, we're going to get the community mental health program done Anyways, uh, we run a pretty lean administration, but uh, we'll find a way to get it done. So, but I'm I'm pretty confident. I've already met with 
three of our trustees and explain the program to them and I'm going to have Chief Kerry come to give the same presentation at our board meeting so uh, I think it I think it sells itself um, pretty much but as as she's talking the partnership is essential um, with the township and I think it just makes sense we have Lockport Township Fire District working with Lockport Township government for the benefit of our community it just makes sense to me so um, uh, I have really nothing to add to there. They killed it on their presentation. So, uh, but I, I'm here for moral support for the supervisor and, and happy to answer any questions of how we're going to get this done. Thank you so much. You guys have any questions? I guess I just have one. When it comes to, I know you said about billing and how some people they're not in the district, they're not in the area. I know the fire protection district is much larger than what technically our township is. So does that. How does that work? Is it strictly just we pay for the people that live in our township mm -hmm. and anything that's so, outside? And if so, you guys would get like how on that flyer that number that's Julia specific. You would have your own number, and when they call, the, there would be a way to verify that address that it's in the township. So right now we have two different sets of voucher numbers. We go out City of Joliet and Joliet Township. So we just look up the address and we know where everybody's at and. We move them to one voucher number or the other. So and, that's and, how it's and what you what you're describing is why we're trying to get the county on board with For this. Sure. You've got Joliet Township, Joliet City, you've got Joliet City and Troy Township, you've got Plainfield Township and Plainfield Village. I mean it's it's really confusing. Oh but, so so that's why we're trying to get it done in a larger sense. So the townships were are a great way to start with this. But really what we're hoping for is for all the township board members to show up at the county 708 meeting and say, uh -huh. you guys need to fund this countywide. And that that's, you know, next year we're going to be sending well, you a note to do that. Well, especially after you've got all the work done. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's, and that's the thing is it's, already, it's ready to go countywide right now. It's just, you know, get, getting it through the political process. Is kind of the what, and the beauty of the expansion are, that they've already done is we're majority Lockport Township. Mm -hmm. We do cover parts of Plainfield, Troy Township, but they're already getting on board with this program. So we're still able to help 100% of our That's community. Awesome. Yeah. Um, one thing uh, I want to touch on too is the whole HIPAA is where the fire department comes in. We already are, are privy to that information when we reach out to these 788 patients that we already responded to. So there's no violation of HIPAA or medical privacy. We reach out to them, and it's voluntary that they contact ThriveWorks. But we encourage it and give them basically no excuses to say no. You know, take care of transportation. You take care of the cost of everything. And it's it's essentially a follow-up to, to help them get better. So I think I think he, he touched on a great point where, you know, as us working in, 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 in as a partnership, uh, you know, the HIPAA violation, all that privacy is kept in place and kept intact. So it all works as far as I can see. And worst case scenario, you get somebody who's in between <coughs> the township and the fire protection district, they're still, they can still go to ThriveWorks. And if they have insurance, it's probably going to be covered 100%. Most mental health is covered 100% for adults anyway. Mm -hmm. Children are a little, sometimes that's tenuous. but. But um, for adults, most of the time, if they have insurance, that's going to be covered. Or they may have a small copay, twenty bucks or whatever, for a visit. So everybody can use ThriveWorks now and be seen in twenty-four to forty-eight hours, which is the big deal. That's amazing. Yeah. So so they can use they can do that now, even without you guys funding anything. They can do that now. It's just that they would have to pay their copay out of pocket. If they're Medicaid, they're going to be covered completely for six, six visits. So if they're Medicaid, they're going to be covered for the first six visits 100%. So um, the only ones you'd have to, work, the only ones that would have a hard time are those who are, uh, those are un, who are uninsured or, or underinsured. Those would, they would have, but that's only like a, that's a hundred dollars for a thing. So they still have access to rapid, definitive care. It's just that they have to pay for it. So, um, but most people, I don't know what the percentage in Lockport Township or Lockport Fire Protection that that is insured versus self pays versus Medicaid but um, most people are going to be covered at already and it's only going to be the few who have uh, have payments to make the uh, co-pays or whatever or who are uninsured or are going to be the ones who are, are really yeah, we've be seen that work we follow our uninsured and we've had five of them move over to insurance vouchers because after they got their mental health and care they were able to get jobs so it's actually coming around you know we're now they're paying back into it 
have any more questions from the trustees? Yeah, you guys reach out anytime, so thank you, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So, given that presentation, there are two uh, approvals I'd like to pass and run through the board. So, just as a quick explanation, so for the first approval, the uh, first rule is to have Lockport Township enter into an agreement with TribeWorks, which is the nonprofit yeah. and fire department, and for us to also yeah. enter an agreement with Lockport Township Fire Department. So, just to kind of briefly reiterate uh, what our friend said, the way this agreement would work is we enter into this agreement, and then the fire department, anytime they receive calls from folks in distress, and they can refer them to ThriveWorks so they receive this mental health care. Now, for the majority of the folks that would be insured, it won't cost the township a penny. For those, that small minority of folks that are uninsured, then in that case, the fire department would verify through their address that they do live in the township. And given that they qualify, the township will then provide them a voucher. And so this is where this agreement comes in, is this, we would give this voucher like a code <coughs> to the patient that they would then enter into Thriver so they can receive that care. Uh, and so for that, we need to enter into a formal agreement with these two entities, and then the approval after, which talks about reserving funds for this mental health project. Uh, there would need to be like an informal, I guess, fund, we could call it, where we could say, let's, for now, let's set up $10,000 worth of vouchers. So if we have patients from here up until the next fiscal year, and we have folks that are uninsured that need care, uh, then we, the agreement says that we could give ThriveWorks permission, right, to, to take out money from our fund, you know, up to that amount that we, we ourselves can limit to provide those vouchers. And like the chief said, just to reiterate, that, that money, that, those funds, those still belong to the township. It's not like it's, you know, the, organiza the other organization's money, and if we want to stop it at any time, we can. Uh, what I'm looking for at this time from the board is that we enter into an agreement and that we reserve funds up for discussion, but to get the ball rolling, I'd say $10,000. And then in the upcoming fiscal year, which would be in March, the new fiscal year, we could then determine you know, how much money we can reserve year over year. Uh, in terms of a financial standpoint, I did talk with our accounting firm, Wilma Rogers, and seeing as how we always have a surplus with our budget, and this type of funding project has established precedence, for example, with our shingle shots. Uh, so we're not asking for large, huge amounts of money here. The township has it well within its budget to fund it, not just this year, but for years to come. So that's my explanations of the approvals. Do we have any questions? If one, so um, we could approve, say, 10,000 today if everybody's in agreement. And then it, if it proves that, you know, by December we need more before the next budget is in place, then we just approve that again. Yes. So, yeah, so we'll again, right now I'm, I'm saying 10,000 to kind of get the ball rolling because what I, I can't necessarily do is just enter an agreement and then have zero dollars in funds. So I'd say $10,000. Uh, and given the, the estimates from the city of Joliet, you know, they said they had about 91,000 and their population is almost triple of what the township has over an entire year. You know, we have almost a third of the population and we have less than half the year left. Mm -hmm. So the amount would certainly be a lot less than 90,000. Let's say we'll start off with 10,000 and we can revisit in a couple of months. And of course, uh, I can provide a report to this board every month to see, you know, the progress of that, of that fund. Any more questions on this? Well, if there are no questions, I'd like to entertain a motion to have Lockport Township enter an agreement with Fryworks and the Lockport Township Fire Department. I'll make that motion. I have a motion by Karen Johnson. I'll second. I have a second by Denise Salvino. Uh, any any questions <coughs> on this approval? Alex, uh, just um, reiterate like they said, um, these are going to be the township residents. But I know, obviously, like a lot of Port City that stretches way out in the Homer Township and stuff like that, you know. Like Jolie, I was having an issue, you know, people calling saying, well, I'm right outside. Sure. I mean, we are strictly going to enforce the, the lot of Township resident rule, yeah. basically. Yes, yes, that is the understanding, and I will work with the fire department to make sure we, we enforce that. But yes, the, it's, um, like it was said in the presentation, uh, 
the Township Fire Protection District. I know it's a little bit larger, but we will verify addresses to make sure that the funding from the Township is to, is to help the Township residents and folks outside of the Township. Uh, again, this program extends beyond our Township, so that funding would come from the other Townships if it's available. Are there any cross sections between Lockport Township and Joliet that we'd have to enter an agreement with other other uh, fire protection districts? So you're you're asking if so are, are some like let's say in Crest Hill are they covered by are that all covered by Lockport Township Fire Protection District or is it covered by Joliet? So I I think uh, it's okay. Lockport. It's all locked work. Yes, sir. Okay. I didn't know if there were, you know, those lines are <laughs> all over the place. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and and the, the parts of uh, City of Lockport that are Homer Township is covered by the Homer Fire Protection District. So I have, I'm sure they'd be next. Uh, I'm so, uh, so the other side of Farrell Road is covered by the Homer <coughs> Fire Protection District, right? Yes. yes okay. <clears throat> Questions? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Moving on to the next approval. The approval is to reserve funds for this joint mental health project. Um, I feel strongly that we can start off with $10,000. Does the board think that amount should be different? I will, I will say further that this amount, $10,000, this is what uh, the Stephen from ThriveWorks and I, was our point of contact with ThriveWorks, we discussed what an appropriate amount would look like, and so we agreed on $10,000. You know, we can change that amount if we need to, but that's that amount isn't arbitrary. That is an amount that he and I discussed. I think it makes sense based on the comparisons to Joliet, what they've experienced, as well as it's not like we're giving them $10,000. Right. It's, it's just a it's, pool it's, exactly. that's available for it's, you. It's, it's our money. And what I will say as well is, you know, with with this, it's not like we agree this and then starting tomorrow, we're starting to get a ton of patients coming in, right? We're, you know, in Lockport, we're still getting the ball rolling, and this is where we work with the fire department, and this is where we work with ThriveWorks to kind of introduce this program and make the school districts aware of this, and the <coughs> residents aware of this. So it's still going to take a bit for residents to become aware of this program anyways, mm -hmm. which is why we decided on this smaller amount. So, so do we have any, any questions on this? Hearing none, can I please entertain a motion to reserve uh, $10,000 worth of funds for this joint mental health project? I'll make that motion. I have a motion by Dean Salvino. I'll second. I have a second by Karen Johnson. Madam Clerk, can I please have a roll call? Sapien? Yes. Vickers? Yes. Morelli? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Salvino? Yes. All right, motion carries. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, so, my folks at the fire department, I very much appreciate you guys coming here. Very excited Thank you. to work with you all on this initiative. Uh, we are going to continue with the rest of the meeting. It is a public meeting. You are more than welcome to stay here, but I also... Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Along the way, you guys have any questions, reach out anytime. We'll be happy to explain anything or answer any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good day. Especially if you have to call Chief Carey like after 10 p.m. Feel free to go ahead and do that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to our next topic, which is the approval of resolution 2023-7 to have elected officials participate in the IMRF. So everyone should have this resolution in their packets. Uh, all it essentially is, is we've passed this resolution really in the past. The only difference is before uh, the requirement uh, to participate in the IMRF fund was that the full-time elected officials work 600 hours, and now it's just 1,000 hours. So. That's the only change, it's just a technical. So, are there any questions on this? I just wondered, I know there was, um, uh, I don't even know what to call it, but just uh, when our highway commissioner changed over, um, I think he was already collecting retirement funds from IMRF, and there was some question as to whether we were contributed or, you know, and I'm guessing that stuff got taken care of, but so are we actually paying into the retirement fund for him now? And it's, 
got that on hold or I don't believe so. Am I in Yeah, please. please okay, apply. so in Park District. So uh, it's my understanding that he was able to opt out 100%. Uh, so, so as an elected official, you have to choose him all the time or off. Um, and chances are his salary is not beneficial to his benefits. So he's just not participating. So the township would, would contribute in either way. Okay, so this is just a general thing, raising the hours for yes. these positions, and not necessarily these people. At this point. <coughs> yeah, a, thousand hours, a thousand hours is a standard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any any other questions on this resolution? Hearing none, can I entertain a motion to approve resolution 2023-7? I'll make a motion. A motion by Karen Johnson. I'll second. I have a second by Nisalvino. Salvino. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right, moving on. I have here next on the agenda, uh, potentially looking to purchase a township flag. Now at Grandparents Day, uh, Trustee Salvino and I discussed this option that um, in previous years, I know at the TOI conference in November is customary for many townships to bring their own township flag uh, and, and to march with it. And just generally speaking, many townships have their own flag, just as you know, states have state flags, et cetera. Uh, and so what we were thinking is over the next several months, we could roll out like some sort of like contest to, to schools where we could have students you know, enter into like a competition to see who can design a flag for the township. Now that while that is a good long-term prospect, I know for at least for November, the conference, that's something that we wouldn't be able to do. So what, what we instead, uh, the trustee Salina and I discussed is just potentially just purchasing a basic flag, like a plain white flag, and then just on each side have a Lockport Township logo. And the logo is just the one you see on the letterhead uh, in your packets. Uh, and so I, I personally thought it was a good idea. I do have some quotes about what a flag that I described would cost. Uh, if we were interested in purchasing a basic two-sided three by five foot flag, would be $192. If we wanted one with a pole sleeve, and we have poles here, so we would need to purchase one, the cost would just amount to $203. Do we have any questions or comments or any discussion on this topic? Well, I'm just wondering, um, do we need to get any kind of permission to include like the state of Illinois on those <coughs> along with the township? Wouldn't that, that might be good enough? Yeah, instead of getting two flags within a year's time. So, what do you, sorry. Well, if we're going to have a contest for designing of a flag, but we're going to buy a flag for the interim. We spend more than $200 on water. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, yeah. uh -huh. so, I guess, let me just to clarify, is what you're saying is, should we just get a flag with the Lockport Township logo and the state of Illinois like, emblem on it? Yeah. Um, and are you saying that would be like a both a long term and short term solution? Just tell me that. I'm trying to understand. I mean, we could yeah. potentially do that for the short short term. Um, I will say again, we have to decide what our township flag would look like. So I feel like, you know, we have the Illinois emblem on the Illinois flag. I feel like the township flag would have to be distinct. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's pretty display. much when they have all the um, flags on display that are specific to their township and not necessarily tied into them. Yeah. I guess we could use it as a banner after that. Do we just call it a banner and get away from flag copy? Say we got a nice banner. Well, it looks like a flag. We could carry in the parade. I mean, you can do a bunch of like stuff with it, display it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah, because then after that, it's just a three and five five. Banner with a logo. Right. We can, <laughs> we can yeah, to yeah. technicalities, we could call it a banner. Yeah. <laughs> I'm cool. We're okay. <laughs> but, but again, I, I think what I'm hearing is the idea, at least for the, the short term, is to purchase a township, we'll call it banner. <laughs> uh, or oh, with a flag sleeve, flag pole sleeve. With a flag pole sleeve. sleeve on it. Um, I don't know if anyone has any thoughts on what it would look like. Again, my thoughts are it would just 
be basic, just white with the Lockport Township logo on either side. Yeah, I think it's keep it simple. We already have that logo. It's, I mean, Lockport Township working for you. It's right. I feel like it's pretty recognizable. Yeah. Township, so. Okay. Well, hearing no other comments, uh, can I entertain a motion, motion to purchase, and I'll just read it off because it's on the agenda, entertain a motion to purchase a Township flag. I make that motion. I have a motion by Karen Johnson. I'll second. I have a second by Denise Salvino. Madam Clerk, can I please have a roll call? Sapien? Yes. Morelli? Yes. Figgis? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Salvino? Yes. Motion carries. All right, moving on. Uh, next topic is approval to receive and plant a peaceful on Township grounds. Now for this, similar to how I had a conversation with um, Trustee Denise Salvino, for the township flag or banner, I had a conversation with Trustee Karen Johnson regarding, uh, you know, peace symbolism. So, <coughs> Trustee uh, Johnson, I'll kick it over to you in a second. But my understanding from this conversation is everyone should have in their packets uh, an image and an explanation of what a peace ball is, and it's just a symbol of, of peace. I just saw one of these walking from Wrigley Field to my friend's house. Down, just like on a random block they're, they're starting in to get Chicago. Pretty, they're starting and I, to get and I popular. like, it yeah. stopped me in my tracks and I had to look on both sides what it said. It was, it was really neat. Yeah, and other, a few other townships have them. I know Joliet Township, not too far away, has them. And again, from my conversations with Trustee Johnson, uh, the reason I, I worked as receive is because this wouldn't cost the township anything. We, um, are in conversations with nonprofits and organizations that would donate this peace pole as well as labor to actually plant it into the township grounds. Um, the reason I have this for approval on the agenda is because we are technically changing the appearance of the township building, right, the grounds, because we are planting a symbolic, uh, we are planting something symbolic. I do need approval from the board for this. So, uh, Trustee Johnson, is there anything you'd like to add? Yeah, no, just I was at a, um, a meeting at the Joliet Township building with a group uh, working to have Joliet become a nonviolent city under a certain organization's nonviolent cities group. And they planted a peace pole there at Joliet Township and just thought, you know, let's do that here. So there's, I may be bringing more <coughs> conversations back to the group at different ways. Joliet qualified for a, a $2 million grant recently for gun violence prevention because they're gun violence numbers were high. I did check, it's a state grant. Um, Bolingbroke is the only other city in uh, Will County that would qualify for that. Gratefully, we have, we don't have high numbers. Uh, but as that program, like the one we just saw today, gets more information about how this takes off cost at the back end, um, uh, there's all different ways to have violence prevention. It doesn't have to be gun violence. So, uh, hoping that we can get more involved in violence prevention as working with uh, both the county and the state and doing whatever we can for residents. So, um, declaring we can have a ceremony or not, but basically it's a four by four with a plastic sleeve on it, and it says "May peace prevail on earth" in four different languages. So Pax Christie Seed Planters has been um, donating these poles, and they said they have four in stock, and they, can, they would give us one. And one of the gentlemen with that group said he would plant it for us. <laughs> Could you tell me the name of that group again, please? Pax, P-A-X, Christie, C-H-R-I-S-T-I, Seed Planters. Seed Planters, okay. Thank you. Do we have any questions or any discussion on this topic? We know where about to put it. We decide, I think, Trustee Johnson, we, didn't we like talked decide. about. We talked about maybe out by our sign, that's where Joliet Township did. They've got a little garden by their township sign. So either there, um, I think just for symmetry, if we put it on one side of the door, I, I know, we could put it anywhere, really, and we can discuss that later. But either one in front of the building and the garden or up by the sign. Because I could, you know, probably people aren't going to notice it as much out there, but, you know, closer to the door where people walk in that they could take notice. Okay. We could just like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Any, any 
questions on this peace board topic? All right, hearing none, can I entertain a motion to uh, receive and plant <coughs> peace pole on Township Ground? I'll make a motion. A motion by Denise Salvino. I'll second. I have a second by Karen Johnson. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. All right. We're done with approvals for the town fund agenda. Moving on to other new business, I will let everyone know that the newsletters were mailed out. Uh, and just from observation and speaking with residents, the majority of the township has actually received them. So very happy to report because in the, the last time we met uh, in August, we had literally just uh, mailed them out. Or they, were, they had just started printing and were just mailed out. Uh, and so folks, we've been getting a lot of calls, a lot of positive feedback about the newsletter. And I will also say that my office has been very, very busy uh, receiving calls from seniors reserving their spot for the senior breakfast and also the folks <laughs> for the Veterans Center. That's one way in which we know that they have received their, their new stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so happy to report that everything has been sent out uh, on time and we're actually a few weeks ahead of schedule. And great job. Great. Yeah, Thank you. Good letter. <laughs> Moving on to upcoming events. We have a few upcoming events. So actually just talking about senior breakfast uh, senior breakfast is on monday tuesday wednesday which is october 2nd 3rd and 4th from 9 a.m to 11 a.m at prairie bluff uh, you know folks have been eagerly calling actually as of last week we're actually already filled up and we have a waiting list for those three days uh, because folks are very excited to attend that breakfast i did send all the elected officials and the attorney as well an invitation to the senior breakfast um, and as well as I, I'd like to ask folks, if you are attending, and in fact, I encourage you to attend any and all breakfasts, uh, to pl please let me or Michelle know. The reason is, again, we need to know a head count ahead of time, uh, just because we are pre-ordering food. So if you haven't already replied to my email, please do so uh, as soon as possible. After that, um, we have a, there is a Lockport Community Resource Fair happening on Saturday, September 30th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, the pastor at Shepherd Hill, Shepherd of the Hill, actually invited us, as well as other organizations in Lockport, uh, to partake in this resource fair, which is on behalf of the Lockport Community uh, Roundtable. I know there will be voter registration there, uh, actually done by our very own clerk. Uh, and then, uh, this, you know, our office will have a table there, as well as, I believe, the assessors. So everyone here is invited to attend. Um, again, it's on Saturday, September 30th. It'd be nice if, if that might be too soon if we had our version of that fire department for sure. You know, it might be a little too quick. Yeah, I think <laughs> our, oh, our version of a mental health for sure, I think that would be, I think that'd be a very quick turnaround. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can do it. Just print out 100. <laughs> <laughs> I, know can, I know you can do it. I'll see what I can do. I'll see what I can do. Just draw it. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> One more upcoming event uh, that is actually here um, at the township office. We have a shred truck on Thursday, October 12th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then inside at the exact same time, uh, Jewel Oscar Pharmacy will be here to give everyone uh, vaccines. So, you know, please be sure to spread the word and invite any and all folks in the township. Moving on to old business and past events. Uh, we had uh, Will County Workforce hosted their job fair here in the community room on Tuesday, August 29th uh, from 1 to 5 p.m. Uh, there was about 31 employers there. I'd say it was very successful. We had a healthy balance of people coming in. It was never at one point any too crowded and too much noise, but also wasn't ever empty. And uh, folks were very eager to come in. And I was also very happy to see that many folks were able to actually get a free professional photo headshot for their LinkedIn or their job application here as well. So it was successful, and I'm in conversations with County Workforce to have a job fair again in the future to make this a recurring thing. Uh, one more past event that is not on the agenda, but I did mention was Grandparents' Day. Grandparents' Day was at the White Oak Library in Crest Hill, and that was on Saturday, August 12th. I'd say, you know, very grateful we were invited to that. Uh, it was a great event. I know there was lots of kids there, and there was also, I think, they had like, like snow cones or something that they were giving out. Uh, very great event. 
Yeah, Ark was doing that so their little ice cream and snow cone. So. Very great event. All right, do we have any comments, suggestions, discuss, further discussion from the trustees uh, regarding the town fund? Um, does our assessor come to back to the meetings or is she not come to the meetings anymore? Uh, that's a conversation I, I would need to further have with the assessor. Uh, my understanding the last time I did discuss with her is right this year is, is a quadrennial year. Uh, and so she's extremely busy, so her bandwidth is a bit limited. Uh, but as to when she is planning on coming back, I, I would say I would, we would need to ask her directly. I don't know at this time. Uh, but also to further uh, emphasize is that as, as required, only voting members are required uh, to come to these meetings. So. While she may not be here, we do encourage her to be here. She is not required uh, to be present at these meetings. Or provide an update of status or if everybody's knocking on her door driving her crazy. <laughs> she has, I will say from observation, her office has been very busy. Mm -hmm. so, uh, one more thing I'd like to add is I know uh, today two of the approvals on here were ideas for from two of the trustees. So I also just want to continue to encourage all the trustees here my office is an open office. If you ever want to have a conversation or a discussion on adding something to the agenda or working on a new project, I, I strongly encourage it. Uh, you know, I am the supervisor and I run these meetings, but I like to think we're all a team here and we can all present projects uh, to the township. Having so said that, could I please entertain a motion to adjourn uh, the town fund meeting? I'll make that motion. I have a motion by Ms. Salvino. I have a second by Karen Johnson. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries and the town fund meeting is adjourned. Moving on now to the general assistance agenda. The first thing on the agenda <coughs> is the approval of the minutes for the monthly meeting of August 8, 2023. I will need a motion to approve those minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. I have a motion by Denise Salvino. I'll second. I have a second by Karen Johnson. Any questions on last month's minutes? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. For the bills this month, uh, we have bills in the amount of $4,832.15. I will need a motion to approve the bills. I'll make that motion. I have a motion by Karen Johnson. I'll second. I have a second by Denise Salvino. Any questions on the bills? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, have please have a roll call. Sapien? Yes. Morelli? Yes. Vickers? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Salvino? Yes. Motion carries and the bills are approved. Do we have any citizens wishing to address the board tonight in regards to general assistance? Hearing and seeing none, we move on. For general assistance, I have no new or old business this month. So, do we have any further discussion from the trustees? If not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn the general assistance meeting. I just have one question. I know um, you used to get a report that I'm not attached to the format, but at least showed how many applications came in, how many people sure. qualified for something or whatever. Can we get something like that just so we know? And most of these are just general costs that have been prorated by what they cost the whole township sure. for the office. Yeah. I, I, that was useful for me to see. Yeah, of course. I'm happy to provide a report going forward. Uh, I will say that from observation and working closely with uh, my staff member, General Assistants, <coughs> these have been going up. Uh, so uh, similar to how I started providing a bus report in Senior Fund, I'm more than happy to provide a, a report for General Assistance cases going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can I entertain a motion to adjourn the general assistance meeting? I'll make that motion. A motion by Karen Johnson. I'll second. I have a second by Salvino. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Uh, general assistance meeting is adjourned. Moving on to our last meeting, which is the senior fund. The first topic on the senior fund agenda is the approval of the minutes for the monthly meeting that is August 8th, 2023. I will need a motion to approve those minutes. I'll make that motion. I have a motion by Karen Johnson. I'll second. I have a second by Denise Salvino. <coughs> Any questions on last month's minutes? 
Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. This month I have bills in the amount of $51,270.47. I will need a motion to approve the bills. To pay the bills. I have a motion by Karen Johnson. I'll second. I have a second by Denise Salvino. Any questions on the bills? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, I please have a roll call. Salvino? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Vickas? Yes. Morelli? Yes. Sabian? Yes. Do we have any citizens wishing to address the board tonight in regards to the senior fund? Over here. Uh, yes, please, could you state your name for the record? Grant Spooner. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> Homer Township is having a senior fair at the Hadley Grade School on Bell Avenue this Saturday. Uh, it's from 10 to 2, I think. Senior, oh, yeah. senior fair this Saturday from 10 to 2? It's kind of across from what used to be Big R. All right, thank you so much. Uh, do we have any other citizens wishing to address the board? All right, hearing none, we'll move on. Uh, so, bus report and new business. You should all have a copy of this month's bus report in your packet. Uh, so I know last month I pre provided a thorough report with data and observations. This time I just condensed it to uh, just the data. But we can see that in July, we had 490 uh, trips on the bus, which averaged to a little under 25 rides per day. The, uh, this past month in August, the number of rides or trips increased to 543, and which brought the, the average rides per day went down a little bit at closer to 24. But I will say if we look at the graph right below it, we see for the average rides per month in 2023, uh, that, um, that amount last month was 503, and this month, uh, given that the amount of trips has increased, the average rides per month has now increased to 508. So we only have uh, you know, two months so far, but again, we're, we are seeing the amount of bus trips continue to increase. Uh, and so right now, we are currently at 80% capacity of what used to be in 2019. Um, and again, things are seasonal, so we might see some changes now that the weather is chillier. But I, as always, I will continue to provide updates. Thank you. Forward. I have no other business for the senior fund. Uh, does anyone else have any points of discussion or anything to bring up? I have one question. I'm not sure if it's for this or other. Um, but as the, the firemen were talking about transportation being an issue for um, people to get to mental health facilities, and when we saw that report from Will County that they were trying to you know, fill in the gaps of services across the townships in the county, um, some of the townships have bus services for disabled and seniors. And I just wondered if, I know this was set up a long time ago and it had to do with a referendum that we would, you know, offer these senior services, but I just wondered if that's something that we can entertain at some point is expanding the services for disabled as well. Or if there's something that we have to look at. That I think we already, we already contribute to PACE, yeah. who handles the disabled and the dialogue. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And we already contribute to that. Yep. Oh, okay. So PACE does that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Can I please entertain a motion to adjourn the senior fund meeting? I'll make a motion. A motion by Karen Johnson. I'll second. Second by Salvino. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you, Thank you too. Six